Good morning. How's everybody today? Uh, my name is Douglas Dobbs, and yes, I'm the owner-operator, funeral director of Dobbs Funeral Home on Kirkman Road, right there at the 408. Been there since 1989. Um, I work there every day. There is no clock in the funeral business, as you might know. Uh, my son, Brandon Dobbs, is sitting right here in the front row. He's just uh, finished his mortuary school program and has now started his internship. So he has another 10, 12 months now with me, cracking the whip, making sure he gets all his studies and his things done, and all his uh, paperwork done on time for the state so he can take his final boards and then be licensed and uh, come in as a licensed funeral director. So I'm very excited about that because uh, people ask me, what's the best advantage of having your son working with you? I said, well, I've been doing this for about 38, 40 years. And uh, the good thing about it is um, there's a lot of lifting in my business. <laughs> I guess you can imagine that. And he can lift just about anything. So my lifting days have now kind of subsided a little bit because I let him do all the heavy stuff. So what I'm going to speak to you today about, uh, it's important. Um, there, these other uh, speakers and all the other uh, venues with the vendors out there are very good. They're, they're all necessary things that are important, but they are optional. And I'm not, <laughs> unfortunately. I'm the last uh, plan of defense, I guess, in, in the life cycle. As Danny says, with the trajectory between the journey to heaven, I'm like heaven's middleman. I'm the green room. So you're going to spend a little time with me before the final journey. So um, I've got a couple brochures out there on the table. One is the uh, pre-need funeral and cemetery arrangements by the state of Florida. Uh, they even got Jeff Atwater's name on it. It's something they just put out. This is the re most recent one. just came out about a month or so ago. So I've got lots of copies of that. It gives you all the real legal stuff of what's going on in pre-need in Florida. Then I've got one of my own brochures, which is like frequently asked questions, all things you want to ask and talk about that you don't, you know, want to talk about on a regular basis, but these are in here. Um, in the funeral business to me, it's funny, I have three children. My, my oldest daughter uh, is married and lives in Pensacola, and she's, uh, she was a dancer and performing arts girl all her life, and I don't know where she got that. Uh, but uh, uh, even though I would go to her dance recitals, and then and Brandon's all the years in lacrosse he played and, and his, his school activities, and now my youngest son's a big tennis player at tennis matches, as soon as you know, they say, oh, which one's your kid? Yeah, it's Dobbs. Say, oh, Dobbs Funeral Home? I go, yeah, that's me. You know, my mom is getting older, and she... <laughs> And so when Danny said that this is a good idea to come up and get some of this out in the open, I said, you won't believe how many times I'm stopped on a regular basis and people have questions about, can I do this ahead of time? Can I get out of the way? Because we just had a death and nothing was planned, nothing was prepared, and it's a mess. And personally, I can attest to that. My mother just passed away in March. My father passed away in 2009, and my father was a... Uh, military man, ex-professional baseball player, and, and very, he was very astute with his records. He was an accounting freak, and everything was taken care of. He had everything all done. My mother, not so much. And you think with a son in the funeral business, that would have been done. And I thought it was, and I have four siblings, and as she was getting towards her last days, my sister called and said, I'm sure mom's got all her pre-need stuff done with the funeral home that I worked at in high school and up in Indiana. And I called them, they said, no, Doug, she's got nothing done. I said, are you kidding me? So all the things that came with that, the funeral planning, of course, I did a lot of it from here and then back and forth. But one of the things that was, and I tell people this now that I can personally attest to, that I didn't know from about 20 years ago, I had put my mother's name on a piece of property that I had. Well, she passes away two, three months you know, later or two months later, I go to sell the property and what's the title search come up with? Well, your mom's on the title, your house. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, <laughs> where's our lawyer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Two of them, and a probate in Indiana and a probate in Florida, and they just walk back and forth and send emails, and every time an email is cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. So I've learned the hard way that that should have been taken care of. So just one tip, if you have parents, or if you are people that are elderly or want to make funeral plans, and your name is on something that should get it off beforehand, get it off it now. <laughs> just take care of that, because it's, it's, uh, it's a nightmare. So uh, pre-need is something that people, I think, is one of the greatest things in the world for, for families because I've had families, I can tell countless stories of arguments I've had in my, in my arrangement room. I've had brothers go to fisticuffs and, because they didn't know what, mom wanted this and mom wanted that and dad told us to do that and they didn't know. One of the greatest pleasures I have is when family, because 
Florida's a transit state, maybe a retirement state, so a lot of these children maybe live other states, so they come in for the funeral arrangements, and they're all sitting around, sometimes the first time they've all talked to each other in a while. And uh, the greatest thing is when I'm sitting with my folders and my paperwork on the desk and the one son spouts off, well, I know what dad wanted. He told this and this and, you know, when mom died, we had this and plant. And I just sit there and wait till they're all done. And then I turn around, I open the folders and I go, here's what mom and dad did three years ago. See all their signatures? See, here's the music they want at the funeral. Here's mom's clothes all laid out. It's in the closet in the third shelf up on the top rack. Here's the, and, the, and their eyes just get like the deer in the headlights and they go, when did they do all that? I go, well, obviously they didn't tell you, but they did it. That's their signature. And the best part, of course, this is the best that they're all worried about, it's paid for. <laughs> That's the best. They opened up a trust three or four years ago. They paid over time or did whatever they, or they paid it off all at once, and it's done. So now the arguments all stop because now, you know, Bob over here wants his dad, you know, dressed in a suit and tie. Jimmy over here wants him in his golf shirt. Where I go, it's pretty much out of your hands, guys, because it's all done and taken care of. Just bring me the stuff that they, they told you to do. So it's the greatest pleasure in the world, because if not, I get the arguments. I just had recently had a family of uh, two sisters. There were, there were six siblings. Two of the sisters. One was the signer on the bank account. So all the money in the bank account, she's the only one that can sign off and close the account. The other sister's a beneficiary on the insurance policy. Both the amounts were almost identical. So now one can get a death certificate and run down and clean out the bank account. The other one files his insurance and gets all the insurance money. And neither one wanted to pay the funeral director. <laughs> so I had to tell these girls, I don't know how you want to work this out, but, you know, I, I can't take the baby and, you know, do the old Solomon. So I said, uh, what we got to do is you need to work this out that either you take, the, here's the total bill, you take half it out of your insurance and you take half out of your, and settle it because... Nobody wanted to give up the goods, and they got into a big argument and almost went to fists in the lobby of my funeral home. So these are all things that can be avoided by pre-planning and pre-need. There's a couple options and ways of doing it. Um, there's, I know there's other funeral uh, suppliers here that have, and they probably have the same things I do, I and mean, we all kind of do the same type of thing. Um, there's either an a insurance-funded pre-funeral plan that they can do, and some have their own companies, and you can do it through an insurance plan, or um, a trust. And I use mostly the trust, the IFDF trust, which is the Independent Funeral Directors Association Trust. I'm, uh, we're an independent funeral home. There's a few of us still left in Orlando that it's just, it's like what we call the mom and pop places, other than the corporate funeral homes. But uh, they all have the same type of trust plans where you can put the money into it. Um, the trusts are usually interest-free. They have flexible, flexible payment plans. Uh, our trust has one where you can fill it all out. You make a little tiny deposit, whatever, and they send you a coupon book. And you can send off a coupon once a month and make your payment and put it over a three-year time plan or whatever. Uh, or you can flex pay it, pay it quarterly or semi-annually or whatever you want to do. So that's one of the, uh, the options on that. So um, they, the, the, the pre-need trust plans are the ones that uh, are the most beneficial, I think, because there's no interest on it. Whatever the cost you pay at the time in 2016 it's frozen and you don't pay any more over time. Your, your payments are done. Whatever interest it makes covers the inflationary factor over the time. So if you live for 10 years, uh, it's nice to have, and I've had people, when I opened up in 1989 and wrote pre-need, I've had families come in and you know now, this many years later, and have a death and they, they look at their pre-need and see what they paid back then. They go, what would that cost today if I did that? And then I get out my price list from 2016 as opposed to the price that's still in the copy of their folder from 1989, and look at it and turn them around and go, there's the cost difference right there. And they're going, wow. You know, back then, I remember some of the cemeteries opening and closing charges, you know, for the digging of the grave was $325. You know, now it's $1,500, $1,600, $1,800 at some of the cemeteries. Uh, plots in some of the cemeteries were six and $700 a plot way back in the 70s and early 80s. And now some of the plots and cemeteries can be as much as $6,000. So things that they can, you can do today, and that's what the, the, kind of the base of my talk is, what can I do now? What can I do right now is to try to get this done so you have things set aside and taken care of. Um, I do have plenty of brochures out there that you can pick up when you come out there, so I want you to see those. Um, one of the other, Danny, I, we've, having Danny as a running partner is a great thing because I have a free counselor. <laughs> it's great. You know, I come to Danny and he comes, we talk with each other. There's lots of, we have a small group that runs with us and occasionally the other guys don't show, so it's just him and I, which as soon as I know that, it's like, man, this is great. I'm getting probably $500 worth of therapy in the next eight miles. So I got to just, just 
run slow so I get all my problems in. <laughs> and running slow with Danny is not an easy task because Danny's very fast. So uh, we'll discuss things, and I've told him stories of, and, and we've talked together, we've prayed together, and, and some of the issues I had, because I've had families that have really big issues, and I can only do so much. I, I'm, I'm not a, a psychiatrist that kind of solve their problems, but we hit things back and forth. And usually the base of those problems are family arguments and problems and issues with money or with they didn't have things planned, and now people don't know what to do. And the cost things of things today, uh, full burials are, of course, you know, with if you have nothing, buying the cemetery spot, all that, that's the most expensive route to go. Uh, cremation, of course, is now on the, uh, has been on the big rise ever since, I think, when I moved here in 1984, cremation was about 22%. Now we're like at 80% of the total disposition is cremation. Uh, now, a lot of those cremations have viewings and services, and we do a lot of those. We do what they call traditional cremations, where you have a full viewing and a service, and we've done here in Henry Chapel many times a viewing the night before and then a service, and then we leave afterward and have the cremation taken care of. And then, or we've had the cremation and memorial service with the urn, and as you all know, the cremorial garden out here is gorgeous, and then we walk out of the Henry Chapel with the urn and then place it in the, uh, in the niche. So, and I'm sure you can talk to Kathy or, or Lori or Dan Danny or anybody about information about the cremorial garden and how they have it set out there. You all know where it's at when you walk out right at the... The, the, the big center B here on the side. It's what? Oh, good. Okay, then you get more information on that. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's a great, that's a great uh, location out there. So um, the, uh, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, the people that are, if you have parents, um, now most of these people are, you have children, and, but if you have parents that are in the elderly stages, um, how important it is to have them involved in the process? If you can have them come with you, to make these arrangements, because there's nothing better to have everyone discuss it. Like Danny says, his culture comes from where they all discuss things together. It just makes it so much easier to plan things with the people that you're planning it for. I know no one likes to talk about it. I'm the last guy anybody wants to talk to. I, I, have, I have funerals every day, and when they leave their three or four day process with me, the one thing, and I'm not offended by it, because I get it a lot, they say, God, I hope I don't see you anytime soon. <laughs> Normally, I'd be offended. i go, I hope I see you because you're a nice guy. But then nobody wants to see me again. So, you know, I feel bad. I run into people at, you know, the store or something. They go, oh, it's, oh, I remember when I saw you last. I'm like, well, don't get me sad. <laughs> but, you know, I can't, I can't get around that. But um, if you bring them with you and everyone does this together, it's all written up. We make copies of everything. I suggest, and the, the, the law firm said this before, you make copies of everything. You give them to the children. You give copies to the lawyer and to the trust people. You give copies to the funeral director. If you have a cemetery you know, that, you, that you have already selected and bought your property, get copies to them. Everybody's on the same page. When we do things with uh, pre-need uh, trust, and you probably know this with Medicare, uh, you're allowed X amount of dollars, I think that's what's the balance. Is it 2200 now, I think, is the, the cap or something that you're allowed in liquid assets? So you can take a pre-need funeral plan into a trust, and once it's trusted with an irrevocable document that you sign with it, that's no longer an asset. So if you put your, all your, your funeral plans together, the state can't touch that money. So that's one of the, I have a lot of people call and say, we're putting mom in a nursing home tomorrow, and, and they say Medicaid's calling, they said that she's got X amount of money, and we've got to spend this money in the funeral, okay? This is what they do. They write it all up. They get it all set in the plan. They fill out the irrevocable document. And what's going to happen as soon as they get in that nursing home, it's usually about two weeks later, somebody at the nursing home calls me and says, I've got this irrevocable document they signed with you with a funeral plan. Could you fax over your copy of it? So I take my copy out, which is the exact copy they have, fax it over to them, and they're the two matching copies. Dated, signed, shows the funeral plan with a trust number and everything on it. So that money that's in that trust is totally protected. That's one of the big things think, people think about, that that trusted money or funeral plan money is not protected. Once it's in an irrevocable uh, trust, it can't be touched by the state, which is very, very important. So there's some people that have to get rid of that money and move it around because there's so, only so much you can do. And the, the, the estate people can talk to you about that, what you can do, what you can gift, what you can't gift, what you can leave in a, a, a will, and things like that. So um, those are very important things. Um, if, you, uh, if you have a property and this is nothing you talk to them about, and these are things that the children get involved with. Uh, these are also things that you may want to talk about at the funeral time, uh, that these things would be taken care of also when it comes to your pre-need. Our pre-need questionnaire has all sorts of questions on it, and, and some of these are in the question and answer things, what to do with all this. Uh, these are things that should be discussed and put in this little booklet. 
So these are things all done at the time, whether the person dies suddenly or dies, you know, or is, you know, lingering from, you know, an illness, you've got these things written down someplace. There's nothing better to have, have it written down and have it in front of you so you can take it to the, to the lawyer, take it to the funeral home, or take whatever and say, these are all plans already done. So, um, I'm trying to think, one of the other things that most, the most frequently questions, I mean, that people ask is, um, what uh, serv- uh, merchandise that we have that you can do from the, for pre need merchandise? Everything can be all done into the trust. You can get casket, your vault. Uh, if it's an urn, you can have that picked out. Uh, register book, memorial folders. All these things can be done ahead of time and set aside and put into the, the pre need plan. Um, one of the things people ask me all the time that, that come in and, uh, that, that see me on the street, whatever, and ask is, is, like I said, is the cost. That the best thing to do, if you can get it done something where you can open up something and freeze the cost, then you're not going to get hit later with it uh, down the road. Um, i trying to think one of the bigger questions that people ask. Uh, probably uh, the, the money thing is the big thing, of course. Um, if, if their wishes are going to be fulfilled, that they fill out, yeah, of course. Anything that's written down, we show this to the family members. Even if one, somebody has power of attorney and wants to change things, once it's in the funeral plan and they sign it, it's their signature. That's a legal document, that trust, it's written, it's been paid for, and it's, and it's taken care of. Oh, the other question I know I was going to think of is that the trust is like, you open the trust, and some people come in, I've had people come in, they just left the oncologist, he told them you've got three months to live. They come in and they open up a trust plan, they say, well, I'll pay what I can now, but I'll have to probably pay, the, you know, my family have to pay the balance of it when I pass away. And then four years later, I run into him at Walmart, and... I said, what happened? He goes, oh, you wouldn't believe it. I'm in remission. Everything went great. I've paid off my funeral plan. It's all done. It's like, that's great. Then I've had people come in and say, well, mom's getting elderly now. You know, she's 86, but, you know, she's healthy as a horse. They open up a funeral plan, and they call me three weeks later, and she passes away. So now they've opened the plan. The trust is partially paid for. The only difference is then we look what the balance is, and, of course, the balance is due then. So the best thing to do is to open up a plan that you can afford payments on if you're going to do it over, over time, and set up on a payment plan, like a monthly payment schedule, whatever, and use the coupons. They're great. I mean, they send them to you, a little coupon book. You tear it off and send it in. It's like a car payment, I guess. And uh, then it's, it's forgotten about. Uh, if you can afford to do it, some people just write a check for it. It's all done. It's put away, and it's taken care of. So um, I think that's about my time. I'm right about on the, on, the, on, the, on the niche here. So I will be in the vendor room later and during the breaks or whatever. And uh, you can come up. We've got plenty of these brochures. Make sure you grab one of each. And then uh, if you do have any questions personally, I have business cards out there. Uh, you can call me at any other time. You can make an appointment come in. We can sit down and tell me all your options of what you like to do. That's usually the first thing I do when a family sits down. I, I say, just what? is going on inside your head. What do you want to do in the direction you want? And let's see how we can get you there. So um, it's easy. It's, 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 and it's best to do it when you're, when you're strong, you're healthy, you got a clean frame of mind, you're not clouded by, you know, a death that just occurred during the night. Um, so the best thing to do is do it ahead of time and do it now. Thank you.